Hola amigos and welcome to the last show on Tel Aviv. My name is Elliot Threet. We have a wonderful guest for you tonight. It's been a while. He was actually our first guest, one of our very first guests. We'll see. This guy, I kind of call him MacGyver of entertainment. He does everything. He does cruise ships. He does movies. He does acting. He does writing. He's going to be a soon-to-be author. This guy, I've actually been in that. Even though I'm a lot older, I'm enamored to him. I kind of call him my young mentor. Our guest tonight is Will C. He's hilarious. He's not just a military guy. We talked about that at the first show. This time we're going to be finding new areas of Will C. He's our guest on the last show for a clip. Watch this and we'll be back. We're just getting started. You missed a couple. So, Hello. You his name. Oh, hey, Will. Nice to meet you. Nice Will, to see you. Will, there you go. Now we know. Glenn suggested he works on the guest Head house. Back and, uh, nice to meet you. He's an electrician. We get a pool house. We have a nice. Hey, Will, would you see yourself in five years? Oh, no, 280, 300 pounds? <laughs> like, no, on a scale of one to ten. I'm gonna need a bigger scale. <laughs> this hunter is tracking wild game. Suddenly, a noise, and he realizes this story isn't even about him! Will, thank you. Uh, you are my first. I had to have you back. You're not a one-shot guy. I know, right? you, you have to have a lot of stuff about you. We, uh, that, fir that first time was good. You, you and Typhu Panda. We talked about the veterans of comedy, but there's so much more to Will see. So, I want to talk about you as a stand-up comedy okay. a comedian right now because you're working all over the place. So, how did you get started in stand-up comedy here in Kansas City? So, in Kansas City, I came back. Um, I got out of the Marine Corps. I had come back here. I uh, was in the Army, uh, Fort Leavenworth. I'm originally from here. Stop. You said you were in the Marine Corps and you got in the Army? So I'm a three-branch veteran. I served is Marine that Corps. possible? It's, it is. Is it there's rare? There's a lot of us, but they're, they're out there. Um, the, the, they're it's kind of like ones. being married three times. I mean, you're it's going in the back <laughs> of the book. It's, it's under the stupid ones. And it's like chapter 32. <laughs> this guy was not thinking. Um, I, so uh, you actually got out of the Marines and says, I'm going to enter the Army now. Well, what's funny is by that time, through the Air Force and the Marine Corps, um, they have what they call a dream sheet. And I wanted to finally go see the world other than deployments and stuff. I wanted to be, get based in like Okinawa or, or Hawaii or someplace cool. So I fill out my dream sheet and I put all these bases down and then I open up my orders and it's Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, 12 miles from my house. And I'm like, well, that didn't go the way I thought no. it was gonna go. <laughs> but, um, I grew, you know, growing up here, there was a comedy club here called Stanford and Sons. And I was very familiar with it. Um, now, hold on. There's a lot of stamina sense. Which location? So, Westport. Um, oh, you're old school. I'm old school. Okay. So, I'm a, I'm a Brian Burgess guy. Yeah, we're, that's We're going to go back. Because a lot uh, of people, you know, 10 years ago, Stanford's 15 years is uh, Legends. So, I, I moved around enough with Stanford that not only were we on, what, I guess, on this side of uh, the street, then they went down where I think it's the World Market is now. Correct. For a yes, that is. Uh, yeah. Came back. And then Johnny Dares and yeah, all that. Then moved out to the Hooters Plaza. So, you started performing. So I, I, you know, I was already kind of doing comedy in 95 is when I started, but it was intimidating. It is. You and all these guys, I'd come to Stanford and I'd, I'd see, you know, Nasser and you and Justin Leon and, you know, Johnny O and all these, you know, Chris Porter. And um, I'm just watching these guys and I'm like, man, and they, you know, you'd go up on stage. I'd watch the open mic and they'd just sit in the back and just judge. And I was so nervous to get up on that stage. But... Burgess, you know, I like the way that he ran that. And it's like you had to get a laugh every 15, you know, you got 30 seconds to engage, 15 seconds to get a laugh after, you know, and just produce laughter, produce laughter. And I, I liked how he ran that and the rules of three. And I just, I got bit by it and I just kept on doing it. And um, little by little, you know, they did, they moved out to the Hooters Plaza. And I think it was Troy and Ron that were running. And then were time. you a feature act by then? I was emceeing featuring. I was just starting. Um, but Craig took me under his belt. I don't know what it is. Craig always told me I look like Wilford Brimley. And I'm like, can we find somebody else? Like maybe exactly. Alec Baldwin or somebody different than... No. I, but he's like, you got to get to L.A. He kept you on put your me, hair gray and jump in a right, pool, right? Diabetes. Um, but he always kept on pushing me to get out to L.A. And I, I had a shot to go out uh, in 2007 to L.A. to just kind of 
be a military consultant on a movie out there. I was going to be there for three months. Not a big deal. Uh, I start driving to LA. My buddy calls me as I'm driving and he's like, hey, there's a writer's strike going on and I've scratched the project. And I told this guy, I'm like, I'm in like New Mexico. I'm, I'm going, I'm coming. And then he's like, I don't know what to tell you. So I hang up the phone with him. I call my wife. I'm like, well, babe, um, I guess I'm coming home. They scratched a the project. My wife was like, whoa, slow down. I've already kissed you goodbye. I'm mentally, re I'm ready for you to be gone for about three months. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Um, I'll tell you, I do know this though. My sleep numbers are 16 uh, when uh, I find out who 43 uh, is. Uh, but uh, uh, I, um, my sister was six months pregnant and my brother-in-law just got orders to the East Coast and the Navy. She was gonna be by herself uh, through this pregnancy. And so I went out there anyway and everybody's like, just get signed up with Central Casting. Go up to LA and get signed up with Central Casting. And I did that. Um, everybody told me I'll never make it. You need five or 10 years to break into the business as an actor. Um, but I was able, I still had the comedy thing. So, because I started at La Jolla at the comedy store, I had, um, I was, Rita at the Improv gave me my own show at the Hollywood Improv. So I had that to kind of back me. So but you did all this before you came back to Kansas City when this, I met this, you. This is all, um, this is 2007. Um, and then, you know, I, I got lucky. I was in town for two weeks in LA and Central Casting called me and they had a commercial with Kanye West. I'm probably the only one with a good Kanye West story. But, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, Yee. I, yeah, I, I got, a, I got in with him when he was popular and people liked him, but I'm doing this commercial with him. The absolute vodka was sponsoring him on, on his world tour. And that it was, uh, the commercial was just take this pill, be Kanye and you could turn into Kanye West. And so I just was supposed to be there for $56 for eight hours, non-union background, walk around the background of this bar. Uh huh. I got lost when I got to set Elliot. And so I ended up going in, into the wardrobe department to try to ask directions like where's holding for non-union. And I'm stalking and Kanye and his entourage comes in wardrobe to get his outfit for the commercial. And he just stops, takes his sunglasses. He's just eyeing me, looks at the wardrobe people like, who's this guy? And they're like, Kanye, uh, Mr. West, sir, we're so sorry. He's non-union background. They're like, you got to get out of here. And I'm like, I don't know where to go. And then Kanye takes a sunglass and he's just like, literally he's like, I like the way you look, you chubby white guy. You know, you're all jiggly and fat and chubby and you want to be the bouncer in this commercial. And I'm so mad. I'm like, did you just call me fat? You mm -hmm. know, and then he's like, and then I go, what, you want me to be what? He's like, I want you to be the bouncer. That guy was a SAG actor. He was in hair and makeup getting ready to go on set. Kanye walks there and he's like, look, I don't need you anymore. This guy's replacing you. Um, I got Taft Hartley right on the spot. I made 63 grand on that commercial, changed my whole life. Wow. They, um, absolutely. Just because you went in the wrong door. I was in the wrong door. But because they were playing that in the five markets, plus playing on airplanes overseas, I would literally, I was going to the mailbox just getting these ridiculous checks. Well, I ended up getting um, his agent, they asked me, they come in the following Monday. And I got signed um, right on the spot. And I ended up landing a show called Mansers on Spike TV. I um, did a lot of on the street interviews. Unbelievable. And then just things just landed. Monk, The Office, My Name is Earl, Knight Rider, Sons of Anarchy, um, Storage Hunters, uh, Gene Simmons, Family Jewels. Yeah, Jones. Family Jewels. I think we had a couple of those clips that you yeah, showed. Yeah, everything just kind of kept on rolling. And it's like every time I think about leaving LA, I would land something else. Movie would land, a commercial would land. Um, I finally did come back here uh, to Kansas City. Um, we moved back here uh, 2020. Uh, My mom got sick and passed during COVID. And so we, we bought a house back here. And now you're back here. So this one, you first ran into me. The, the, tell me the first show you did with Elliot three. Do you remember? The first show, like comedy wise? I yes. Did? He doesn't remember. No, he doesn't the remember, first, folks. well, the first, he doesn't remember. No. Well, I'm not going to say that's going down to Branson, but we did a lot of shows at Stanford together. And I actually, I think you came and did a cancer show for me at the Hollywood or at the Kansas City Improv. Um, yeah. You did for a buddy of mine. Um, I, know I, might, done, I do a lot I, of charity. I know stuff. we've done, yeah. um, Stuff with with BCP and it's, um, well, we've done stuff with veterans. Come out, you're you're a bigger philanthropist, philanthropist comedian. Just like I think we have that in common. When everybody says a charity show, we just so uh, we're at not how much. I will which do is, it uh, if I'm I know that there. for a fact. Well, I tell you what, we're gonna do. We we talked about how you got there. We're gonna play another clip of we'll see. Then we're gonna talk about what is in your future. Let's do it. What is in your future? One more clip from we'll see, and we'll be back on the last show on television. Hey, I'm Will C. And I'm Sean Kelly. And we're the Taste Buds. Man, we've been traveling the world as comics. We've eaten at every restaurant manageable. When we're out there, we realize two things. Man, we love food. And we love to make people laugh. And don't you I carry my own spoon. We need two singles for one night. 400 bucks. What? You've got the all exclusive interior design, the original tie massage. Check it out, four stars. Take care of the stars. I'll teach you a friend a lesson about service. Best customer service at Teller, too. <laughs> What's that? Power's out? Hey, 
They will. I got it. I got it. Glenn says he's very good. We're back on the last show on Televita with Will C. And uh, I've got a secret to reveal about Will C. He doesn't know about this, but uh, he likes the McRib. I love the he McRib. He loves... I, we're coming up, his part, his license, well, tell him what your license plate says. So, <laughs> as a joke, during COVID, I was trying to raise money for different organizations. I got into this whole McRib eating contest and I, just doing- A McRib eating I contest. I love the, we're, we're from Kansas City, we're known for good barbecue, like the McRib. So, Ouch. Uh, that, that, hurt. That, that hurt, right? <laughs> but I love them so much, as a joke, I got a tattoo of a McRib uh, on my lower back. Take it one step farther. Tramp stamp. Correct. I didn't okay. know if I could say that. So anyway, take it one step farther. I have my disabled veterans plates. I have personalized veterans plates on my car. You get six choices. So I had the five that I wanted. I had one spot left. I'm like, as a joke, I put McRibs mm -hmm. in there. All of a sudden, I get the notification. McRib, McRibs, McRibs has been preferred. Uh, this, and I'm like, oh wow. So now I have the I have the tramp stamp. I have the the license plate. And so I'll go around to McDonald's and tell them I'm from corporate. And uh, try to get free. How food come McDonald's them? hasn't hired you to do a McRib commercial? I'm a McDonald's. If you're watching this, I'm a. I, oh, I'm, I'm a sure proud, they are. I'm a proud member of the screen. I, I would love to do a commercial for you, you guys. I, I'm a walking billboard. Have you? But the McRib. Explain this because it only comes out for once a year. Kind of like my. Is this because like. people? Um, <laughs> what? Um, so, sorry, that was horrible. That was horrible. No, but why? <laughs> they, they, they release it once. Is it a certain time of year? Like the Shamrock no, Shake? No, usually mid November to the first of December. Yes, yeah, like it comes out, and they they keep them until they they sell out. Um, and, and do they sell out? They they every year they sell out. Oh come on! Every year. They, yeah, they, I've seen some of your social media posts, and you say I can't find the McRib. I, I can't. Find I have the to search. So they have this McRib locator. And it'll tell you where where they're at. So I will literally surprisingly, I'm a fat man. That is not an app on my phone. People, by like the way, like the tornado watchers, the people that yeah, I, 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 I have that on my car. It's like beep 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 McRib McRib McRib. Um, I, 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 I love them. And you got to. What I love is when you, they go, "Would you like the second one for a dollar?" I'm yes. Like, lady, are you kidding me right now? Of course I want the second one for now. What is it anyway? Is it just a pork loin or? It, it, I, I don't know. What, I don't want to know what it is, but it's, it's clearly. It, it's, I think it's something about the pickles and the, the onions and the barbecue sauce. The bun sauce. with yeah, the, the, that's just, salty. It's just, it's delicious. I mean, All it right. really is good. Anyway. How so, many McRibs have you had in the last six months? So when I got off ship, I knew that um, they were saying that it was going to end by December 1st. And so I, I get off ship November 5th. <laughs> And I'm like, um, I knew I was only going to be in town till the 19th before I got back on another ship. And so I'm like, all right, I've got two weeks. I put in 32. I, I ate 32 McRibs in 14 days. Oh, my God. But then. Hold on. That's like three McRibs a day. Sometimes four. So I, I've, I've done the, the, the lunch and dinner. Get, buy one, get the second one for a dollar. Is it the same Eat McDonald's or do you just kind of. No, I'm not an animal. I go, I go around. <laughs> I, I got to go around a different one so they don't recognize me. Um, so you're gonna go, hey man, you got a problem here. <laughs> you know, they, just, they see me pull up. You now with that with that McDonald's app though, they do know your name. So like when you pull up, and are you like, serious? They do, and they're like, um, they'll go, your total's twelve, or it'd be twelve sixteen. They go, your total's twelve sixteen, just like this afternoon, William Clifton. And I'm like, oh my god, okay, I got to go to a different one. Find um, McRib. I had no. This is like a. Uh, you should write a script. I don't know. Have you been online? Are there other McRibites, or what do they call you? <laughs> What do they call you in the McRib I don't, craving I don't community? Know. I, I don't. There's probably nobody out there like me that is as addicted to them as I. I I, I started buying the clothes. They they have McRib clothing line. They do. Yeah, and it's like white. Everything's white, just so you can drip barbecue sauce on it. Jeez. So uh, my sweatshirt looks well, like a I, crime I scene. I thought I was breaking a secret, McRibs. The no, it's 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 insane so, so have, do you ever are you a shame mcrib eater or do you eat them with other friends or do you just eat them by yourself in the car usually in the car <laughs> <laughs> crying and then 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 i got i go to the doctor i have surgery last friday they draw my blood the doctor is like we can't do surgery right now your blood it was so high your blood he's sugar. like what, um why do you think your a1c is so high mr clifton i'm like i go how high is it they said 11 4. right that's wow. like that's almost like yeah. like coma I said, well, I've eaten 32 McRibs in the last 14 days. I was like, and I'm nervous. And they're like, okay. So they, should, they, we got me down into the right range. But once I explained why, but I'm, 
I'm the most unhealthy, healthy McRib eater. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, he's skinny, yeah. And the, my weight's the best has been in so long, yeah. but at the same time, I. I'm, hey, man, if, if that's what it takes to get yeah. down to under 200 pounds, McRib I will have diet. my McRibs. I'm, we'll, we'll get them Uber Eats right now. All right, so anyway, so you mentioned that we buried the lead there. So the last time we worked together, we were doing a gig in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. We went down to Poplar And you Bluff. were just about to embark on the second phase of your career, which is cruise ships. Comedians have a lot of avenues to make money. There's, there's comedy clubs, there's colleges, there are private gigs, and then there's another one called cruise ships. Now, I'd done that, yeah, 25 years ago. Actually, that's how I got into your business. I saved legend. up all my money on cruise ships and opened up a, a GNC store in Salina, Kansas. But you... It's a lot different, but you were nervous about this. And then flash forward, smash I, cut, you're doing cruises all the time. So I, tell me about your life on cruise ships. When we were driving down there, I was probably the most nervous I'd ever been about taking something I knew nothing about. Um, I couldn't give you any advice. No, because was I was, yeah. Well, you, gave me, you did give me some good advice. Um, just how to treat the audience and how to relate. Being, yeah. I think the reason I've done as well as I have is I am relating to my audience. Um, Every port is different, and the people that get on those ships, they're, they're, they are. The, the different, um, it's diverse, and, and so... Well, first of all, the crews on a cruise ship are the most diverse. It's like the UN. The crew the, the, bar is the, like the, the Star Wars is, bar. Wow. There's, um, there's Filipinos, there's Hispanics, there's Haitians, there's Indians, there's Dutch. Italians, yeah, I mean... Yeah, everybody. It's, it's, it's so weird because it's like the, you know, your, your pilots and everything, your captains and all this stuff. They're all Norwegian. They're, they're all well. They're all Italian, so because okay. oh, all, yeah. all the ships come from Italy, and so these are all Italian. And then your, like your maintenance guys, they're all they're Russian, Ukraine, and stuff like that. And then yeah. you have your Filipinos and your Hispanics that are your porters and your your restaurants. And this and is much like Star Trek. It, it's very check off. Yeah, it's very. <laughs> um, Scotty Ohura. <laughs> but I I love it, and I, I've told you this. It's cruise ship comedy. It's not for everybody. It's not. You have to find your voice and your net, and it's different than land gigs. It's so different than land gigs. Um, well, here, here's how it's different, uh, I'll tell you. For, because when I'm performing on land and I bomb, that's the last time I see those people. If you're on a cruise ship, they come I am every stuck, show. Yeah, oh, I am God. stuck with those people. The whole, it, it cuts both ways, because if you bomb, you're stuck, you're hiding out. If you're good, you walk around like a celebrity on the ship, I, right? They call it like the 30 minute, 30 feet rule. You know, if 30 minutes after your show, you're still, you're, you're a rock star. 30 feet down the, down the hall, people say, hey, you, I loved you, I loved you, if you did good. If I heard not, that rule, but I didn't know it was applied to audience. If, I thought it was not, applied it's to like, something else. It's cr- because it's not, it, you're not a band. It's yeah. not like they come together. Hey, play Freebird. Mm-hmm. So nobody wants to hear the same joke the next night. Like, hey, I really like that teabagging joke you did. Yeah. And whatever. Nobody wants to hear that. And so you're just you have to do different material. And every there's show, the rub. Non-repeatable material. Because um, they come back and they're listening. Show. And I hate that, and that's why I could never do that. I was good for maybe uh, what I would do with like a midnight show and a 45. So I maybe had three sets, but how many sets have you got to do on a cruise six. ship? I do six shows. Six different six, um, shows. Ten minute shows? The 30? They're 20. Well, your 30 is what they want, 30, 30. But then you have these split shows where you do 25 minutes or 30 with the other comic in the, in the main theater room. What gets me is the people that they do, they'll come to every show and they'll come to the 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 adult show and they'll want you to be kind of dirty and then they come back to the pg show with their arms crossed as a challenge let's see if you can like how clean can you be you know and it's like i i just don't get the i don't know i just I've let me ask you this about cruise ships uh have you ever you know we had that story about the cruise ship to antarctica did you ever run any bad seas since you've been out there we have hit some rough waters and especially being down in those uh, those crew cabins and you can hear everything um, it's brutal. It's crew like, cabin. Sounds like. It's what do you mean by crew cabin? Those, those are some. You get the rooms that are down in the belly of the ship. Um, you see, when I did the ships, they had us up on the uh, actually because we were celebrities back then. Yeah, it's not well, quite I was like up that. At the top. Um, if you can get sea level, that's. that's are you serious? It's that, like an aquarium when that, you're looking at like, it. That's nice, but if I, going down below the water is, is that's rough for me. I, and they put you at the you're at the front, and so it's just you like still bam, have windows? bam, bam, bam. Um, no, no, there's no windows. They, where they keep us, it's like because the ships are different. So it's pitch, the rooms have to be able to be pitch dark for the people that work, you know, the different eight hour shifts or whatever. Uh-huh. So um, I've yet to get a, a porthole or anything. Um, but I have. No wonder. Well, you know, the reason they say cruise ship cabins are so small is because they want you out mingling. Yeah, mingling. Like in Vegas, doing all that other stuff. They, um, so tell me about actually, you've run into 
We, our last guest we had on the show was Geechee Guy, a guy you ran into. I love Geechee. James Johans. We have a lot of cruise ship comics on this show there. there you know, um, it seemed like I never thought that that would be a route that I'd take. But then I saw friends of mine that were making a good living. They're talking about all these different ports and seeing all these different places. And I'm like, I want that. And so, you know, you I know what you're called, though, right? In the... They call them boat acts. Boat it's actually, acts. it's kind of a, yeah, it's a, like, a it's, bad term. Uh, now, what is now, the guy? He's a boat act. But now it's yeah, like, he's a boat act with a car that didn't get repossessed, right? right? Exactly. My bills are paid. With <laughs> big ribs on. on the plate, right? But now it's like, with it being legit comedy clubs, you know, it, it's it's a tight niche to get in. It's tough. It's tough to get in. Very hard. Um, but once because you're going to work forever because you're literally forever. booked out. We actually caught you on your break here because you won't be back as we sit here in uh, 2022. You won't be back in town until like April of uh, 23. I'm booked up until September 21st of 2023. When I get on ship next week, December 21st. Hmm, me thinks, is this when the McRib comes back out next it's year? It's done. I, oh, oh. <laughs> they said that this was the final. They're not. It's not coming back. It's done. I think that's a, that's some kind of... Uh, I'm not this buying. Is, I think they're doing like they're doing it, that Mexican pizza switcheroo. It's like switcheroo. Elton John. He's coming back around. Uh, so the, yeah, they'll be back. Um, I love it. I, I really do. I've met some. I've met some. I've met this really cool couple on this last cruise, and it's funny. It makes me laugh because I was headed, I was going up to get a haircut, and this couple, um, Tim and and I think Rhonda. Um, and they were. I don't know if she was just not feeling well, but they were going to get a couple's massage. And the whole ride up to the 14th floor, she's like, I don't feel good. She's like, I just, I don't, I don't, I, I think I'm just going to go back to the room. And he's like, we've already paid for this. You know, and I finally, I look at the guy, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like I'll, I'll go with you. You know, I'm like, and it was a weird couple's massage at first. It was, but, you know, once he loosened up and we kind of got through it, it was, <laughs> it, was, it was really nice. But, uh, I, uh, you know, I, used there, to, <laughs> I used to have a bit, I said, uh, my wife and I got a couple's massage. I didn't know that there was a... Uh, a weight limit. So basically, they just did uh, all of me and about a third of her because that's, apparently that's a three hundred pound limit on the cat person. That's hilarious. Size. I, uh, I, I, I always laugh because you know you get the massages and the, the pedicures and stuff, and um, they they, and I'm not trying to. However, it sounds. Say it. The English is so good when they tell you how much it costs. Mm -hmm. But it's so not good when they're telling you what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like they, they just kind of slip it in there, and she's like, and it makes it sound like you need that. And I'm like, okay. And then, like, I get my bill, and even with the employee discount and stuff, I'm like, did I really just get a pedicure for $185? And I'm like, yes, you did. And then she hands me this bottle, and it feels like just sand. And she's like, she tells me, she's like, every night you need to rub this on your leg. Um, and it's defoli exfoliating and mm -hmm. rub it on your feet. Hey, she upsold you. And I'm like, man, but. So I brought it home to my wife. My wife's like, she's like, I can't believe they talked you into buying that. And I'm like, I didn't know I bought it. Um, they just probably get left at the playground. So where does Will see as we, we, we do these clips here? We've done everything you do with the veterans of, of, of uh, comedy, right? So We've I, done that. I'm do, I, I did tell you I'm, I'm working on the book right now. They're working on a book. I'm, I'm an auctioneer. I'm doing celebrity auctions. You're doing auctioneering? Um, I'm getting ready to do a TEDx. So I'm, TEDx on, so I'm, I'm working on my 15 minute TEDx. So right where are you going to be in five years? Has anybody ever asked you this? Probably 280, 300 pounds. <laughs> I, uh, I, That's where I want to be, <laughs> heading the other direction. You know, um, I really feel like success is what you want. It. I don't think anybody can really put a definition or define somebody else's success. But I feel like, you know, we were talking about this earlier. I'm very blessed. And I feel like with the different things that have happened in my life, you know, and, and we know a lot of people might know, car wrecks, deployments, military, getting hurt, getting bit by that brown recluse spider, almost all these things that have led to this day. And that's kind of where my TEDx is, is because I'm like, like I can't change my past. None of us can change our past, nor do I know tomorrow. And when I started writing my TEDx and just my combat to comedy and my whole therapy that I was trying to do for myself, 300 is what I put at the top of the paper. I'm like, I can't change yesterday. I don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring, but I can live in five minute, five minute increments. I can live in 300 seconds. And when I learned to do that and just get through this five minutes and the next five minutes and try to be the best person and successful in my mind in this five minutes, before you know it, tomorrow's here. And I've ended up having a successful day, which ends up turning into a successful life. I love that. That's, so. a, that's a great way to end. And uh, you definitely live by that. That is. Words to live by. Thank you so much, Wilsey. Thanks for having me.
Appreciate Thank it. you for being the last show. Guillermo, thanks Guillermo. you too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.